So I have started the canvases and I am on the back panel now. And anybody who has seen my videos before, the tent videos I build just on the floor of my house. Not ideal. I do have the table over there I can use to kind of pin things for shorter stuff. But these big panels, just they, it's just easier to do them on the floor. So I have it kind of, I this panel I pinned on the trailer itself. So I went out, I fitted, fitted. I went out, I did a fitment test on it, and I kind of pinned it to get the alignment correct. This panel I did not. I have not pinned this on the trailer. So I basically used this side to build that side. So we're <laughs> finger crossing that it is uh, the same. I know it's going to be really close. The trailer itself is off just a very small bit on the one side, and it just drops a little bit on one side. It's like a quarter inch different. So I don't think that's going to affect this canvas at all because we have quite a bit of stretch here in the screen. So I'm just going to go with it. And up here on the turns, <clears throat> the overhang and stuff, we'll, we'll clean all that up. But that's kind of what I got. I was going to throw a uh, square on it to see if we're close. I'm just eyeballing it. I hadn't put a square on it to make sure we're good yet. Looks pretty good there. You know, visually, as long as it's square visually, even if you're off a little bit, it looks pretty good there, too. All right, we'll check the upper ones, and then I think we're ready to sew this one. The nice thing about this canvas, unlike the other ones I've built, I can send the smallest amount through the machine because we're only sewing a panel and not a full tent. So each one of these is just its own separate panel, which is awesome. <laughs> like, man, I don't even have to think about this. Like, you can just throw it in the machine and go. Let's see what we got here. So if all four of these, yeah, we look pretty good. So if all, all of those are good, those two curves look pretty similar. I think we're good to go. Let's get this one sewed and throw it on the trailer and fingers crossed it fits. There will be a, a lid, a flap over the screen because this is a bed that all of this screen will be exposed. Basically, this is your ceiling. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a panel, comes all the way down, it'll have zippers on the side with a big wide rain flap over the zipper. So hopefully once we throw this on it fits and I can finish this one out. Well the, the straight panels on this camper are super simple. They just, uh, the windows, I'm just going to make little kick outs that'll hold this out. This will have a rod inside of it. So it'll just kick out and back to the camper. This back panel though, I built a little different than it was originally. I do have the pattern of the original, but they had the track, the awning track, on the outside of the camper, kind of like this rail up here is. And the idea, whoa, just about went down on the beetle. The idea of these campers was you could have a canvas on the outside and a screen on the inside. Now, <laughs> Putting that up like that on that bead track and having that wrap around and do all, poor, poor, poor design. The other thing that they did not do is they did not have a zipper flap to cover the zipper. So all these trailers have just exposed raw zipper. So what do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> it's gonna get wet and I, there's no way around that. So I took this track off of the outside, moved it to the inside. You can see the exposed fiberglass there. Got to do something to kind of pretty that up a little bit. But this is going to work much better because all the canvases have been moved in on the roof line. And out here, we're going to run an awning, a camper awning that comes out. But I wanted a screen back here because if you're laying in this bed back here, it'd be kind of cool to have like a tent effect where you're looking up and you can see the stars. And then there'll be a flap that goes up and over it. But fitment is tricky on this guy because you go from straight sides to rounded to it's just kind of a nightmare. And I think I've got it. So there'll be a snap here and there down, down on this side. But when I pull this over and kind of complement the sexy curve of the trailer, and there'll be a snap down here. That'll pull that over that little hole. So there'll be a snap right there. I think that's going to look really nice. And when I pull that, this will tuck inside here. 
So I think I've about got it, but I had to pin it on the trailer. I made the panels and got it close to what I thought it was and then just had to kind of work my pins in and around. And then up here, I have a, a plan to go off of these. There's some bolts that go through up there. So we'll just make a tab. Um, what am I trying to say? A grommet that'll go up and over those. So that'll pull that piece so that it's snug with the roof line. In the original ones, they just had kind of a little flap that just, it didn't attach, it didn't do anything. It just covered that hole, and it's just a terrible design. And they just tied around where this rib is on the corner. They tied the canvas. <laughs> if that's not dust in the leak, I don't know what is. But I think we've got it pretty well designed here. And I like that it opens up. Obviously these will be kicked out and open up a lot of light too. That one I haven't even cut out yet. It's just the screen sewed in. I haven't cut out the, the canvas portion. And then up here will be a full panorama screen. I don't know if I'm gonna go all the way around to the door. I haven't decided yet. Cause it's kind of weird that that one ends there. And then if you wrap a full panorama around I don't know I can always change that but for right now this is the way it is I think it's gonna look okay and then on the door because there's no uh, support there to hold your canvas you have to put something like this we don't have the original piece that was in here it's the one thing we were missing of all the things that are going to be missing, that is the easiest one to make. So if we're going to be missing one, that's the one I want to miss. So that kind of goes like a so. Let me get that shut. I got to fix my, my door gap right there, but it looks pretty good. It's a little crooked. Yeah, that'll work. So there are just a lot of things on this trailer that weren't well thought out, like putting a door support right here. Watch this. <laughs> I mean, what do you think's gonna happen, you know? Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. There is this piece of wood that actually goes, uh, is this one drilled the wrong way? That one's drilled the wrong way. So that's the mess up one that goes there and then the pole goes through it and then that screws into the door but still i mean you put that at like the weakest point just kind of crazy the old canvas i've mentioned this i think a couple times hooked out here on the outside track we moved it to the inside track bought a track for up there to put the front one on and then i flipped the back track so that it's on the inside of the camper so when you go to shut the door the door pole does not line up with the camper line. Let me pull this canvas tight so you can see what I'm talking about here. So the door pole needs bent just a teeny, teeny bit. It just needs to kind of push back against the camper before I can kind of make this wrap around canvas. It's a full panorama screen is what I've made. Uh, with a drop down shade, much like these side shades, that will then roll up. And on this one, I can make the roll up be a little pocket, little tabs that will just slide into the track. I probably won't do that this trip. Ugh, I'm getting overtaken by the tarp here. But uh, that's probably what I will do eventually. You know, those little light holders that you can buy for campers that you string along that have the little light holders to hang your awning lights. That's probably what we'll use for that. That should work on that front one. And then back over here, I'll come up with some little tie up somehow. So that's the plan today to get that one done. Get these side uh, decorative pieces back on so that we can then hem this, install the snaps and get that all taken care of. Got the cabinet all done. Let me walk to the back of the trailer and I'll show you that. Take my coffee with me though. This place is an absolute disaster. Can't take it much longer. <laughs> the chaos that we're living in trying to get this thing done so there's the cabinet 
We don't have an active canvas, but by golly, we've got a stove and some kitchen towels. The stain looks like a really funny color back here. That is a Homestrand Mariner alcohol stove. It's out of my sailboat, and we will probably just leave it in the trailer. I never cook on it on the boat, so probably just leave it in the camper. That's the times we're going to be cooking. So that's where we are today. Ay, ay, ay. Trying to get these uh, canvases on the trailer. Uh, the camper rally is tomorrow is when it starts. <laughs> this is the stage that I'm at. Eh, nothing like the last minute. Uh, I wanted to keep the, the front panoramic uh, screen one single piece. And I used that heavy duty pet screen, which has zero shrink stretch. So it kind of makes it difficult to work with. I'm real happy with this line over here. I think this line looks really nice. It's got a real nice turn to it. Really like the way that looks. The zipper's already in on this side. I just got a seam rip out there so I can tuck that piece under and stitch that so that side's done. The only thing I, I don't like is this camper has to transition. This door has to open. So it transitions where this canvas comes inside, you split it, and this canvas comes outside. It's kind of tricky. So I'm just pinning that, trying to get that figured out. And I think we've about got it. You notice here the screen goes like this. That's because to keep it straight around, I had to kind of taper it down. It kind of throws the screen lines off a little bit, makes them crooked. I wish that hadn't been on the door side. I wish I'd done that on the other side, but I am not ripping all that back out to change it. So it's going to be like it is. Camp rallies tomorrow. So, you know, we can't, I can't be changing a bunch of stuff just because I'm being super picky. Most people won't even notice it. I will, but it's me. And now that I know it's there, it also bugs me more. Anyway, that is where we are. So I'm going to go inside and mark. There's a door pole. I've got it pinned so you can't see it, but there's a pole right here on the door. So I've got to go inside and mark where that little pocket needs to be. I have pinned my trim off point here. I think we're good. I think we got it. Just got to figure out that little one goes in, one comes out transition, and then we've got it. And I got to obviously go around and Finish stitch everything, tuck that under, make this stitch looks like it's the same going all the way up. So all that still has to be done, but the hard work is done. Found this book and some of our old camper stuff. There's our camper and you can't really see it in the picture, but that stove that on the countertop is a home strand mirror. It's the exact same stove. Well, the little vintage camper rally that we were attempting to make is starting today and as you can see i'm just now fiberglassing <laughs> tail light housings but uh i think we'll make it tomorrow and get there in time to enjoy the weekend there most of the the hard labor is done and i'll, I'll do a reveal uh probably in this video we'll go down to the rally all the trim pieces are on this one needs a few more screws added to it but Try to get up here. I added a track on the inside and it's hitting on the screw heads. So here, all the way across. <laughs> the track fits in there just fine. But now we're hitting on the screw heads because I, you know, I changed something. And we're also hitting on a board, a trim board right here. So the roof won't go all the way down. They're hitting on that board. So that has to be lowered down. But and the stove does fit. Put my uh, home strand mariner out of my boat in there. Fits perfect. So I think we're well on our way. She looks like a patina bomb. But we're rolling with it. I was hoping to have the fiberglass on the top part, this part, at least sanded and have resin poured on it. But nope. I doubt it'll even get washed. Yeah. I've gone around and kind of clearanced uh, what should be close to a circle. <laughs> it's close. And then I just lightly sand it to knock the sheen off so that it's not real, real obvious. Those are just repaired. <laughs> but it's not too bad. We probably could use another, I don't know, another layer or two. The other side is, is uh, the one that was really, really bad. This right here I need to repair at some point. Dips in right there. But it looks, it looks 
much better than it did. And it's, it's pretty strong now. I mean, I don't think, I don't think it's going anywhere. I'll definitely hold the tail light because it'll move the whole trailer if I pull on it. So I think we should be okay. The only thing on this side, I may have to work on it a little bit more because the light may not sit flush. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, those are filled now so I can drill the new holes for the uh, license plate light. This is an odd uh, trailer. I don't know what that light is really gonna shine on because the license plate goes down here and there's this thing in your way. So, not sure about that. I thought about just filling this hole completely and uh, maybe just mounting it to the bed, but the bed has to come out. So there's a, there's a bed that goes in here. Let me back this camera back a little bit. So there's a bed that goes right here that slides out. So if I have a wiring system on there, that's probably not going to work too well. We'll see. That's what you call redneck ingenuity right there. That is a sailboat mast <laughs> that is ratchet strapped to the carport at the top and bottom. Instant pipe bender break for sheet metal works it's not stupid if it works well we made it the back bed is out we got to put it back in and install some trim pieces in here these will get put against the beds other than that and get the beds in here and get all that uh we went for a little bit of a resto mod put some metal up top the cubbies there with some uh, led backlighting but otherwise we kept it pretty traditional Except for the stain color. We went with a little bit different stain color, more of a gray. I still have some hemming to do on the canvas, but we'll be leaving here in a couple hours, so. Kept uh, the throwback to the original style cutting board that was in here. And a couple of the pieces are original. The door jam. I gotta get that trim piece up. The door jam here is original. The front board which is in front of the little kitchenette area is original. So we kept kept some of the original pieces, one or two of them. This backboard here that's in the bed, we did paint it, but it, it's an original piece. Right here we had to modify it a little bit, so our wheel must not have been exactly uh, where it should have been. But otherwise, uh, it's pretty much all new. The sink, the faucet, all of that is original. This is original countertop. All the hardware, the door hardware is original. The light painted up really nice. I tried to go with the same, and it's funny because I matched it almost exactly. You can't, I can't even tell where the old paint really was. So that'll get installed today. It hangs right here by my metal, whoops, by my metal. We'll get that all put in. I had Aaron put uh, access panels down to the where the uh, bed comes through. And we can use that for just a little bit of storage. Before they just had little uh, holes cut back there to give you access to pull the pins on the bed. I had him go ahead and just cut the, the old beds, cut an access panel in it. I think it looks pretty good though. Floor's waxed. So we'll show more of it after I get the canvas on. I gotta go finish hemming this one up, this front one here. And I gotta make an awning. <laughs> I still gotta make an awning. It goes on this bead track that kicks out. So I better get busy. I just thought I'd show you real quick before we put that bed back in, kind of what that backpack back section looked like. It's just kind of nice to be able to see everything, how it all goes back together. With that, we'll see you at the campground. This might be a wee bit snug. <sighs>
kind of like a Volkswagen engine music to the ear. Just kind of sings to you. <laughs> <laughs> 